Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. This will likely be the last hole I shoot in this studio slash home office, in this apartment as a whole, because I'm actually in the process of moving out in the upcoming weeks. Uh, I've been in this apartment now for the last four plus years in San Francisco, uh, and a couple years in after my roommate had moved out, I converted this master bedroom into my home office slash studio, which is, as you can clearly see behind me, grown over time. But uh, I will be packing up a lot of this stuff in the days, weeks to come and getting settled uh, into the new space. So I figured why not take a look at some of the stuff I've picked up over the last couple of weeks, months, and shoot the final haul in this video, in this apartment slash office. Because I've been trying to hold off on getting anything new until I move into the new space. Um, all right. So with that, I actually just kind of wanted to start with some of the items I got most recently and then kind of work my way backwards a little bit. Um, into different categories here. And, and this was recently, I guess, technically, I have one other thing that was my most recent pick up because I, pick up because I got today, but these came in earlier in the weekend. These are my Osame keycap sets. So I have two keycap complete sets and then a novelty key set. If you are not aware of the mechanical keyboard realm, then you may not know of this brand, but those who are definitely know Osame. They make really high quality, very aesthetic keycaps. And you can kind of see it here. In their packaging but these are quite literally for like your keyboards you can get custom uh keycaps and they have these kind of themes so for example this one is called the sakura special edition novelty kit um and these are just like specific keys and that's why they're called the novelty kit like the space bar i just i have one on my main keyboard right now um the enter keys the backspace key and other keys that you can kind of use to replace and customize your keyboard if you have a theme going on so i got two specific keycap sets um, outside of the novelty key sets, I got their Matcha Hiragana Base kit, which I have on one of my keyboards in our uh, office. So like my actual office that I go to on a day to day. Uh, this is my little setup there. If you want to kind of get a sneak peek, I went for this whole Matcha theme uh, on one of my Keychron keyboards that I swapped out. So yeah, I hooked this uh, Matcha key, uh, keycap set onto that alongside their matching Matcha mouse pad or mouse mat. Uh, for the desk, which really kind of tied everything in. So really, really cool if you're in the mechanical keyboard scene and you want kind of these custom keycaps, uh, then Osume is definitely a brand to check out. Um, I also got their Year of the Rabbit uh, release, which was a more recent release and a limited one at that. So decided to pick up this keycap set just to have it. Don't know which keyboard I'm going to throw this on yet, but glad I was able to snag one in the recent drop that they had. The irony in that I stopped the last recording by accidentally hitting my keyboard with the keycap box but yeah that was my recent pickup from osame um so with that let's kind of move forward here uh into some miscellaneous game pickups i haven't picked up too many games in the last couple of weeks months one because again i'm kind of just been dealing with this move and prepping for all that uh and two i've been just trying to play through more of my games and in backlogs uh digitally and just physical copies and three um as of late uh like i said i'm just trying to also curate my collection a little bit better getting items I really want and quality items versus just buying a bunch of quantity. But in the last couple of weeks, I have picked up three games in particular. This one I actually just picked up today. First and foremost is Diddy Kong Racing for the N64. So adding on to my N64 collection for the retro collection, this is the one collection I am trying to get a complete game set of. Um, so slowly dwindling through this, this is Diddy Kong Racing. This is essentially like the Donkey Kong version meets Mario Kart 64. And a lot of people, depending on who you ask, really love this game <laughs> in comparison in terms of racers. This was made by Rare, who really, uh, Rareware, who really, really propped up, obviously, really popular titles on the N64. So yeah, Diddy Kong Racing, happy to finally add this to the collection. I got this today for 25 bucks at a store in the East Bay known as Phoenix Games, where I shop at quite often. And as evidence from my two other pickups I was going to mention here that I got weeks earlier at that same store, uh, some Final Fantasy pickups. And I got these two specifically just to kind of add to the collection of Final Fantasy titles and games. Um, so we have first and foremost, the four disc set of Final Fantasy nine here for the original PlayStation. Uh, it's crazy that yeah, games back in the day used to come on multiple disc. This is back when uh, Square Enix was Square Soft. So here we have again, the PlayStation one, uh, copy of Final Fantasy IX. And I got this for $25, so good deal. They had like the best hits uh, edition or case, and I just went with the OG case here for the collection. I'll be honest, fake gamer here, I've never played Final Fantasy IX, and I am kind of going back and playing through a lot of the 
older Final Fantasies, and I've heard a lot of great things about this, so uh, excited to have the OG copy for the PS1 to add to the collection here. So again, Final Fantasy IX, and then a game I have played through a lot, and one of my favorites, by all means, is Final Fantasy VII. Now, this is the remake, and specifically, this is the, the deluxe edition of the remake for the PS4. I have it on the PlayStation 5, I have it on the PlayStation 4 digitally already, but I want to get this deluxe edition because it came with a steelbook case and a mini soundtrack CD, so you get all of that in here, of course, alongside the physical PlayStation 4 title, but here you have the really, really cool steelbook, which I've really been into, these kind of collector's editions recently. I think in my last pickup I showed Final Fantasy XII collector's edition that I picked up, and then you have, like I said, uh, an art book, a uh, hardcover art book in here. As well as, I think the thing that I really liked was the whole mini soundtrack CD that's also in here. So you get the official soundtrack of Final Fantasy VII on a CD. Not to say that you can't stream this like everywhere online nowadays, but I thought it was a cool little novelty to have uh, the soundtrack CD all in this case. So again, this is the Final Fantasy VII uh, Remake Deluxe Edition that I also picked up at Phoenix Games to kind of just add to the Final Fantasy collection. And those conclude the games that I picked up in the last couple of weeks and months, at least in physical form. Don't get me started on the Steam Summer Sale that passed by uh, a couple of weeks ago. That's a whole other ball game <laughs> of money that I spent there. But continuing on the train of physical pickups, um, let's talk about two handhelds that I have sitting here in front of me. Uh, because again, this was also picked up at Phoenix Games here in the East Bay. Um, so this is the Game Boy Color. Uh, this is that kind of fantastic kind of color edition that Nintendo really popularized with their Game Boys and eventually the Nintendo 64s. Uh, but this is the transparent one. Um, I don't actually know the correct color, what they call this. I don't know if it was like a crystal color or whatever, but this transparent color is something I'm a huge like sucker for when it comes to technology, being able to see into it and just kind of, you know, this design is something that I've always been a fan of. And it was really cool to see it in a Game Boy. I actually didn't know they did this style, this kind of like a white translucent color here. But yeah, Saw this, had to pick it up, even though I have the kind of atomic purple Game Boy Color up there as well, because I wanted one to rock and one to stock. Given that this atomic purple one was like the one I had as a child, um, I really wanted to, or that color, not that specific one, but um, I wanted to have one that was like stock, and then I wanted to have one that I had the opportunity to mod. So my plan is to mod something with this, with an IPS display, speaker upgrade, all that fun stuff as a future project. So had to pick this up. $80, which is very pricey for a Game Boy Color, but... Uh, always happy to support the Phoenix Games store. Uh, and then moving on with the handhelds. Next up is the Nintendo 2DS. Now, this handheld I actually got from a seller on Instagram, uh, a local reseller here in the area and in the video game community, um, by the name of Retro Shadow. So he was doing a claim sale on his Instagram page, and he had this Nintendo 2DS as a part of his claim sale. I never was interested in the 2DS. This design in particular is more of like... It was always like very toy-like in terms of its look and features, and it kind of feels like this cheap-looking tablet. But I got the appeal behind it, right? The 2DS was this non-kind of foldable model. It was supposed to appeal to more economic like audience, and that it didn't have to have that 3D uh, technology behind it, so it can be a little bit cheaper. Um, but yeah, never owned one of these growing up, and now that I have like a growing 3DS and Nintendo handheld collection, I figured why not just pick this up in this kind of uh, atomic red color. I believe they called it, and, you know, have it for the collection. So here it is. Now I can say I have it, the Nintendo 2DS. Uh, I believe this is like the original model because I think they came out in multiple variants eventually. Um, so, yeah, have that. And in that same pickup or that same claim sale, I also picked up another one of my grails in the retro gaming scene that I've been looking for, and that was a backwards compatible PlayStation 3. I was really happy to get my hands on this finally because I've been in the market for a PlayStation 3 um, to kind of complete my Sony collection, PS1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Uh, and the PlayStation 3 is the one model that technically I did get a couple months back in Japan. I actually have a couple models back there, one of them being a junk model of the OG PS3 and another one being a working one, which is the PlayStation 3, I believe, Slim Edition in white. Um, anyhow, the backwards compatible was like my holy grail, right? Because it's a little bit harder to get nowadays or... Not as hard to get, but it, it's costlier because of its like value. And if you own one of those in like a physical copy of a PlayStation 5 um, with a disc set, you basically cover all five generations of Sony games. So was really happy to get my hands on this PlayStation 3. 
decent condition, not a lot of cosmetic damage, working perfectly fine. I haven't checked the internals to look, see if things, you know, like <laughs> there's going to be future problems. But as far as my testing has been in the last couple weeks that I've had it, everything's been running fine. And it's really great to play PlayStation 2 games natively via HDMI versus needing to have to use adapters for like the standard PS2. So yeah, backwards compatible PS3 that I got to pick up alongside this deal from Retro Shadow on Instagram. So shout out to him. Moving forward, uh, one of the videos that I actually uploaded on my tech channel, youtube.com slash digital dojos for the shameless plug, was my new gaming PC that I actually have sitting right next to me, my new workstation PC. Because you can see, uh, if your iPhone in the background here, my old desktop is actually sitting back there um, with its 3080 Ti and all that. I'm just getting this ready for the move. This is going to be like a spare PC that I use. Um, but moved over and upgraded when all in on a new build for 2023 going into 2024. You can check out that video, but my new custom PC has a 7950X 3D from AMD, of course, the Ryzen series, top of the line, H9 Elite, a new 4090 ROG Strix card in there, 64 gigs of Dominator DDR5 RAM. Uh, yeah, it's a overkill build by all means, but you can check out the full video on that build in the description down below if you're interested. But that was definitely a recent pickup as of the last couple of weeks. Um, and then with that, not too long ago via Amazon, I also got some other packages that kind of accompanied that build. So when I originally had bought that build and, and got all the parts, I bought them all at once, the intention was to transfer my hard drives over, my NVMe drives from this build over just to kind of preserve my data and whatnot. The one part I did not upgrade or buy new was a hard drive. And I figured all this new fancy hardware, all this overkill, this processor, GPU and all that, uh, eventually I, I had to get a better hard drive because my new motherboard supports PCIe 5 gen uh, NVMe uh, SSDs. So I decided to pick up uh, an NVMe uh, SSD and specifically a Gen 5 one. So this is the Crucial T700 Pro. This is one of the earlier uh, Gen 5 NVMe's that came out and, and got a lot of decent reviews. Um, and nowadays I'm sure there's ones that are better and higher spec and, and so on and so forth. But this is just a two terabyte model, Gen 5, um, insane, you know, speeds, <laughs> claiming up to 12,400 megabits of uh, transfer speeds uh, in terms of read and then, you know, write. Uh, they claim 1.8 faster than Gen 4, 3.4 faster than Gen 3. Uh, I just recently, as of yesterday, threw this in my build finally. And definitely the transfer speeds are, you know ridiculous and the reads and write speeds are also ridiculous at a baseline level obviously gen 5 has some kind of um drawbacks in terms of like the technical aspects and what you get and, and it's sequential and random writes and reads but this isn't the video to get into the technical mumbo jumbo nonetheless this was a big upgrade for me in terms of speed and, and to kind of add additional storage because my new motherboard supports up to four nvme ssds and then expansion on top of that um so Great to have more storage, fast storage of that in this new kind of beast of a build. And then in that same breath, I also got this Antec GPU support bracket slash stand. Um, if you don't know the things about these 4090s, they are beefy, beefy cards. And the ROG Shrix 4090 that I have is no exception. In my H9 Elite case, it was being propped up barely by a JRig PCIe bracket that I set up just to kind of support the back end weight there. Um, you can vertically mount these GPUs. I opted not to because I actually use my other PCIe slots and I didn't want to block them that way. So instead I got this Antec mount, which seems to have worked and, and serves as an extra support for the back of the 4090. Uh, this one was the only one that I found on Amazon that was like one tall enough to support what I needed in my current build and to support this chonky beast of a card. So, so far it's been fine. It can be a bit of an eyesore depending on how you see it or don't see it in terms of your build. So make sure that it supports your card and it's compatible with your build and what you need. But I would imagine if it works in this specific setup that I have, it's going to be totally fine in many other people's setups that are just looking to get a little bit more support for their, you know, chonky new series GPU. Um, so yeah, those are two additions to the PC that I had recently built as well. And lastly, to round this up, my Steam Deck dock this is the official steam deck dock to kind of hark back to what i was talking about earlier the steam summer sale i went a little crazy got a lot of games to finally add to my ever-growing backlog uh games that i always just want to play and have never bought and justified buying them because they were x amount of sale during steam summer sale um i also opted to pick this up because i've been wanting a, an official steam 
um, deck dock for like my living room to kind of use my Steam Deck more in like this kind of docked Nintendo Switch like format. And I figured getting the dock would be the kind of best way to experience that rather than using like third party solutions. Uh, and you get a free charger out of it, which is always nice because it's the official Steam Deck charger. And so far, having used this, it's it's worked great. It's been really great to have this in my living room transfer my Steam Deck down and just kind of sit on the couch and play, hook up a controller, utilize things like the USB ports. You can hook up Ethernet to this if you really want to get a full setup. So um, highly recommend it. It is definitely more expensive than the standard docks that you can get on there. I know there's third-party ones on Amazon that are like half the price, and I'm sure some of those work fine from what I've seen in the reviews. But I like just knowing the notion of having the official dock. You get the official firmware updates. You get a charger, which costs a lot anyway, and I always like to have two chargers for things like the handheld, one that I can take on traveling and just one that you can generally leave at home. So for me, in terms of overall value, it's worth it at its, like I think, nearly $80 price point. But yeah, Steam Deck Dock picked it up on sale during the Steam Summer Sale. and happy to finally have that. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is the kind of haul. That is the breakdown of a lot of stuff I've picked up in the last month or two last couple weeks last day or two <laughs> if anything at that um i wanted to get this video out because i'm taking kind of stock and inventory of a lot of the things that i've gotten recently and starting to move a lot of this stuff out here into boxes and slowly prep for the big move that's upcoming so yeah i hope you enjoyed these hauls as always uh, i want to kind of get these more on a cadence whether it's going to be monthly or what have you where you can kind of just expect a haul, whether it's games, luxury goods, what have you, just things I've picked up in general. I always feel like it's a fun way to just kind of compile it all into one video. So if you have any interest in these or questions about some of the stuff that I picked up, drop it down in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you in what will probably be eventually the new apartment. And with that, thanks for watching.